This is the kind of story that gives me nightmares. Uh, this is definitely a cautionary tale um, because I can see myself making the same mistake. But we both wanted to be on this video because um, it also kind of highlights the differences between how men and women think. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is about uh, Aram von Benedict. So he's a very well-known hunting influencer. He writes for Outdoor Life. I should say as a caution, be sure not to um, confuse him with his brother, who's also a pretty well-known in this space. So this is Aram von Benedict. He's hunting in Utah. And in the same place, there's also another lady who's hunting, or a lady who is hunting. Her name's Rochelle with her husband, Easton. And what happened as the, during the hunt has kind of set the internet on fire mm -hmm. over the last few days. And so we kind of want to present just both sides of the story in a neutral way. Okay, Rochelle, she went hunting with her husband one of the first times, and she's been looking forward to this for a long time. She gets on the deer. And this is shoots. opening morning when yes. there are you know, hunters everywhere, presumably, first thing, uh, opening morning. Yes, she shoots the deer, misses once. Easton helps her to reload the gun and she shoots again. This time she said it sounded differently and so she thought that she had hit the deer, for sure, she thought. Easton said, hit it one more time. The deer stepped forward and she shot again, thinking she also hit it. When they went to go recover the deer, they met up with Aram and his party. And eventually, somewhere along the line, things were looking a little bit iffy to Rochelle. And so she mentioned, interestingly, you're coming after a, the same, or you're coming after a deer in the same area that I'm looking for a deer. Let me just tell you, mine had a collar on it. So like a radio caller from the DWR or fishing game where they're kind of tracking the GPS data. So it's pretty easy to identify, you know, the one with the radio caller, it's not very common. Yes. So they said that two or three times, my deer, the one that Rochelle shot, had a collar on it. They asked Aram if he had seen a collar on the deer he shot. And he told them, according to Rochelle, that no, he didn't see a collar on the deer that he shot. So they pursued the blood trail and eventually Aram pushed his way ahead of the Rochelle and her party, found the deer bleeding out and shot two times to kill the deer. So from that story, it really sounds like this dude just stole this incredible deer but the plot's about to thicken quite a lot as we hear his side of the story. And that's what has social media on fire right now. Speaking of social media being on fire, if you've been watching your retirement accounts and looking at the market lately, you have seen it moving like the waves of the sea. It can get us all a little bit nervous about protecting our retirement, which is why I'm grateful to today's video sponsor, Lear Capital, who helps people to invest in gold and silver to store value. You know, the the cool thing about investing in gold and silver is one, you can physically have it that nobody can take away from you and the government can't just print more of it away. Otherwise, they, they probably would have, right? Mm. Like, <laughs> they'd be like, yeah, we're doing that. We like Lear Capital because they have a 25 year track record of being a reputable company. Plus they have great incentives if you start working with them that you can even invest using your IRA or other retirement accounts that you already have to get that physical gold and silver. Go to the number below. You can call them and talk about it. See if it's something that would be a fit for you. Or go to learbackfire.com and you can get the investor guide and more information about investing in gold and silver. Now the other side of the story. So Aram von Benedict, first of all, you got to come into this knowing that he is a very, very experienced hunter. He's probably killed a lot more things than I have. He has a lot of experience in the woods. And so this is a new hunter, Rochelle, versus somebody who has a lot of experience. So he's hunting opening morning and he does hear Rochelle's shots go off. He says there were four shots and that one of them sounded like, like a hit. Rochelle was at 630 yards. He is at 750 yards, but he doesn't take the time to get a, a rangefinder reading after the deer had already moved. And so the deer move out after she shot. He figures she must have shot another deer because these don't appear to be injured. 
He doesn't see any radio collars on the deer. He shoots and hits the deer in the front leg. Now, at 750 yards, he would have had to been off by his, his rangefinder distance, or his, the distance he thought by quite a lot. Uh, you know, to be, that's, you know, maybe 30 inches down to the knee, and we missed on the wind as well. That's a pretty bad shot. It was 730. 730 yards, mm -hmm. thank you. So, that's a pretty bad shot. There's zero chance that I would even take a 730 yard shot, much less if I didn't have the time to really set up and get an exact range and stuff. I'm sure he's not proud of that shot, okay? But and he even acknowledged. He acknowledged that. Is, is, this is not smart. Um, but he shoots and then he goes down into the area. It uh, feels bad that he made a bad shot. Goes down to the area where he wants to go find this deer and finish it off. That's where he encounters Rochelle. She said she also shot a deer. He acknowledges that she said that it was a radio collared deer. He says that he didn't say that he didn't shoot one with a radio collar, just that he didn't see a radio collar. The only thing he was pretty sure of is that he hit the deer in the knee. Right, which kind of makes sense that you would know that Im immediately because if you hit it in the knee, I mean, it's gonna, it's not gonna be able to just walk around as easily. So he, they meet up with the other group. Everything's totally cordial between them. Both groups say everything was totally cordial between them. Um, but you know, this is a very experienced hunter with an amazing buck. He's keyed up. He's trying yeah. to get this thing, right? <laughs> He's a man. He's in game mode. Uh, that's right. I can see myself in this, right? <laughs> And, you know, from what he saw, he didn't think the deer had been shot at all before. So, okay, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Other than we're forcing a pretty rough shot. They meet up. Um, it sounds like Rochelle's in the lead, kind of in the group, as they're both working toward where they think their deer are. Um, at some point, Aram gets in, in the front. And Aram's in the front when he gets over the hill, sees the deer, and there's no dispute that he puts the final two shots into the deer that actually kills it. So then they see it's a radio collared buck and they realize they both shot at that same radio collared buck. So there are four holes in the buck, uh, which first of all, this is just awful. This is just a terrible <laughs> representation of, of hunting. hunting. It we're is. just horrible. This makes us look so bad when we're just Swiss cheesing up deer from 600, 700 yards away. Neither of them are capable of making that shot. So you, I mean, fact is you're not because they both made bad shots, right? So neither one of them should have shot that. This is a, it's just terrible representation of hunting, mm -hmm. right? That, that's just there, but, but it is what it is. Neither group really disputes that Rochelle did shoot first and she did actually hit that buck. Dispute about it, whether it's one or two times, but she did hit it first. Uh -huh. And so the way I learned hunting, like from hunter's ed as a teenager, is the first blood rule. I've always, do you remember what they taught you no. in hunter's ed? Uh -uh, that doesn't ring a bell to me. That's what I've always understood as the first blood rule, whoever was the first to draw blood, it's their animal. Well, that would have solved this issue. Would have solved, I mean, <laughs> hey, it's a Rocky movie, right? That's gotta be the answer. But then a lot of other states say that whoever makes the first lethal shot is who owns it. And so was her shot lethal? Well, not immediately lethal, certainly. Um, certainly the immediately lethal was from Aram. So we actually have been texting with somebody uh, at the DWR and we asked in Utah how exactly that works, what the real law is. We recognize that this is an emotionally charged situation. Insta instances where multiple parties are involved in the harvest of single animal is not overly uncommon in Utah and current regulations do not define ownership in such situations. That really surprised me. So there's actually no law about who owns it if two people shot it. Yeah, so we responded back and have asked, you know, what, well, what is to be done in this sort of situation? Okay, looking back at this situation as a whole, I, I just can't agree with, uh, okay, even if he didn't know that she shot it, she did shoot the deer first. The, I, neither of them dispute that. She shot it first. Now, at the time he made his shot, he didn't realize that. And so it's okay. You know, he didn't realize it. He didn't see that it was injured when he shot. But when she said, it's a radio collared buck, I mean, there's not going to be two of them there probably. Um, and so she knew, he knew that he did, that she did shoot it first and it was radio collared. And so even at the very end, when he took the final shots, um, yes, he the, he's the one that made the lethal shot to bring it down, but 
I mean, if seconds after somebody shot a deer, I shot it, I would say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I was shooting it at the same buck. You know, you hit it first, whatever. Even if I was, even if I were legally entitled to it, I still, there's no way you'd say, yeah, I'm taking it. Yeah, it is interesting to hear Aram's perspective on it. If you go and read his statement, because he is acknowledging that I was intense. I was in motion and yeah. trying to get this deer because that was what he was. I mean, that's just a, a typical guy for you. The thing that was interesting is that he alluded to them, Rochelle, maybe knowing that they had that there was a reason why they knew that that buck had a, do a radio collar yeah, on it. Yeah, this was interesting. So he says later in there, he says, there was a seriously illegal act that took place that day and it wasn't by my group. But he, and he says, but I'm not throwing shade, so I won't say anything about it. Little follow up as I'm editing this. So we're kind of putting, reading between the lines here about the comment about the radio caller and something illegal that happened in the follow-up. I don't know if that's what he's alleging. And that's why I'm a little bit uncomfortable, you know, without, that, with outdoor life that they immediately canned the guy because I feel like, ah, you know, we've all done some dumb, dumb stuff and maybe there are some facts that we don't quite know yet. So I, I'm just trying to give the benefit of the doubt because that would totally change the scenario for me. The, like at first I say, okay, this was wrong. Like you, if she hit it first, if you later learned that you had inserted in yourself in the middle of her hunt and didn't give her a chance unabated to go finish it and try to find that deer again, because you did find the blood trail, um, then that's not right. Okay, so I, I, I can't defend that. But honestly, like reading it, like could I see myself in game mode sometime? getting a little greedy, a little bit ahead of myself and doing something. I mean, I've had bad days. I've done some dumb stuff. So, and so yes. honestly, that's why I say it's a cautionary tale is we all need to kind of check ourselves a little bit in the hunting woods. It's competitive. You're trying to get the job done. And hey, we all, we all do dumb stuff. And it's easy to just say on social media, ah, he's terrible, get him. But if we're all honest, I mean, when have you, I mean, which one of you has never had a greedy, selfish moment where you kind of got ahead of yourself and ended up doing something a little bit wrong? It is fascinating to just compare the two sides of the story because his language is, I tried hard to use a logic and a scientific approach to determine who had killed the deer. And he suggested an autopsy to decide like which shots were in the deer. And Rochelle's perspective is he just went in there and started, he shot twice and then before we could even get up to the deer, he started cutting the deer and he was celebrating and taking photos with his party. And then later on, he was just totally unreasonable. Like we couldn't even, like my husband tried to argue with him, but he was just unreasonable. And so we decided to let him have the deer. So you can see that there are there are just two different ways of yeah. thinking about this situation because Aram is just thinking, I got the deer, I'm trying to do this methodically. You know, he's going through the motions, he's done this countless times. And Rochelle, she just has her own womanly emotions and perspectives also with her thinking, you're just a brash hunter who yep. is just totally rude. Yeah, it's it's feelings and logic and just <laughs> men and women don't think the same. <laughs> okay, but there was another point that we, we mentioned about the radio caller. So all I know is I, I used to go do photography in Yellowstone and in Yellowstone, oh my gosh, they love those wolves so much. Like wherever the wolves are, there are like 20 Jeeps that like follow and just like watching them. Like we're paying those guys to just watch these wolves all day. And you get six wolf tags a year in Idaho, like 50 miles away. Anyway, I digress. But the, so they'll have, you know, the Jeeps have these long, you know, radio antennas on their Jeep and they're just searching for, you know, the GPS caller info, you know, um, coming from these, these wolves so that they know where, where they are. And so that's what I wondered is, is it possible for a hunter? I'm sure it's very, very illegal, but is it possible for hunters to like be scanning for those callers and to do that? If that's the case, 
ooh, that makes me feel differently about coloring animals. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's very, very illegal, but uh, if that's possible, I don't know if I would support that. Anyway, that's inter we asked DWR about that. We haven't heard back yet. Anyway, it's a it's an interesting tale. I, I there were there were definite bad actions happened, but I consider it a cautionary tale because I'm always checking myself. Like, hey, you know, you're into this, but when we're in the woods, we gotta be good representatives of our sport and just make sure, yeah, this we're competing, we're out there, we're doing man stuff, we're trying to get this done, and you gotta make sure, hey, am I doing this the right way? Making good shots, making sure we're dealing with others correctly, and not trying to take things that aren't yours or kind of jostle in front of other people. So we wanted to make this video just to highlight that so that we can all kind of check ourselves. Now, what say ye, social media? <laughs>